After three seasons as the BC Lions head coach, Mike Benavides is gone. Fired today after a lackluster 9-9 season, culminating with a playoff whipping at the hands of the Montreal Alouettes last weekend. Lowell Ulrich joins me from his home in North Vancouver. LU, I'm just going to ask you quite simply, why Benavides? Well, obviously that this uh, move had to be made and given the fact that the, you know, you've had three straight years of uh, regression or two years of regressive steps after, you know, what started out like a pretty promising career at 13 and 5 uh, in the 2012 season. You know, Benavides leaves with a 33 and 21 mark and anybody who's ever done this job, I'm sure would probably take great pride in that. I know he will. But it's 0 and 3 in the playoffs. This is a team that, uh, you know, sort of prided itself. This isn't the Lions of the 60s, 70s, 80s, where they were never getting to the playoffs. This was a team that prided itself in getting to the playoffs and doing something. They weren't doing anything in the playoffs, and it really showed in Montreal. Uh, LU, you know, for a guy who's just been fired, Mike Benavides did have you know, quite a bit of success. You mentioned his 33-21 and 21 regular season record and the three years as head coach. In the, in the previous, I believe, four years as defensive coordinator, he led the Lions to a Grey Cup. Prior to that, he was the Lions' special teams coordinator and won another Grey Cup then. He was obviously doing some things right. In hindsight, in 2012, was he the right guy for the job to succeed Wally Buono? Well, in the way the Lions operate with, you know, a, a culture that was built by Wally Bono, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, he had been groomed, Benavides, that is, all the way through uh, his career. The two uh, spent time together, of course, with the Calgary Stampeders. They came uh, as, uh, as an entry, as it were, in, the, in 2003, along with a lot of other uh, coaches from Calgary. And it was the right succession plan. The Lions were building something really well. Benavides made some good hires, too. I thought that... Uh, you know, um, some of the some of the guys that he brought in from the United States, uh, guys like Johnny Hall and Carl Hairston, uh, Randy Melvin, some really good and out of the box thinking type hires. But there was obviously some sort of a division. The message that he was trying to convey was not getting through to his players. There was there were players who were saying towards the end that they wasn't sure whether it was Benavides who was the coach or Wally Buono was the coach. And despite the fact that they've made this move now. That still becomes an issue because the general manager is the general manager and he will, uh, you know, set the tone for this franchise for whoever uh, is the head coach going forward. Okay, LU, finally, let's talk about what's next. Uh, interesting situation in Vancouver. Of course, you've got the Vancouver Canucks, who no one expected to be fighting for top spot in the entire league, and that's what's happening now. You've got the Vancouver Whitecaps, who made major inroads in the 2014 season. And so where does that leave the BC Lions now, uh, after this mediocre season they had? And what do they need to do if they hope to capture some of that limited buzz that's available in this market? Well, what you do is what they did, and that was to, to make a head cha med co coaching change. I mean, clearly, uh, the Lions got the message from their fan base, many of whom wrote uh, not only to them, but to uh, the province and the province.com saying, we're not coming back if he's coming back. So, I mean, there is a bit of a reactionary sense to this. And I'm not sure that the fan base probably will say, well, that's fine. We'll all sign up and, uh, for our season tickets right now immediately as a result of this move. There's got to be more. I mean, obviously, uh, Mike Benavides doesn't run or block or catch. Uh, so, I mean, there's more got to be done. Uh, but the Lions, with this move, at least are, you know, sort of kicking and scratching and crawling to stride, try to stay relevant in the local marketplace. Very quickly. Do you see Dave Dickinson, the Stampeders offensive coordinator, as the guy the Lions will give his first head coaching job to? I would not rule it out. Okay, thanks, LU.